Hey there my gorgeous friends on the internet, in today's episode we're gonna take a look at a top 10 list of JavaScript one-liners. You guys really love the CSS one-liners, so we're gonna transition over to JavaScript. Now I've tried to do my hardest to find properties that you might not know of, and I think this list is gonna surprise you. But if you have a new one that you haven't seen on this list, leave it down in the comments below. I'll give it the wee like so everyone can see, everyone can see you. And before we get going, I also want to plug out developbya.com if you're interested in learning more about front-end technologies. We have courses in JavaScript, React, HTML and CSS animations, all that jazz. So go over to developbya.com and check out the courses. Let's get going. So first on the list is something called design mode. So did you ever want to turn text into a different text and you don't want to go into your code? Or just update this little button here to display something else? Or the time here, you're not happy with 12th of October. And you want it to be Halloween already. Well, fear no more. We have a little property called document.design mode. So if you, that's off by default, but if we turn this on, boom. You can grab literally any text on your screen and update it to whatever you like. Cool sites. Lame sites. For number two, we have a random boolean. So if you're ever looking to get a 50-50 chance, whether it's in a dice game or like a roulette, this is the one that you can use. So I just have a text selected here. And what we can do is change the text content of this so you can see it. And what we're gonna do is set this equal to math.random. And what this does basically generates a number between zero and one. And then we can just do, is it bigger or equal to 0 0.5? All right, so if it's bigger than that, then it's gonna say true. If it's not, then it's gonna be false. So that's your 50-50. Let's take a look. Refresh, look at that, false, true, false, true. True, 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 false. If you're ever in need of merging two arrays together, this is the simplest way that you can do it. So here we have a to-dos, so subscribe to Develop by Ed and also check out the courses. So I'm just looping over here and creating these elements. So if I wanna output it to the screen, you can see it right there, boom. And then we have our socials, if I do that, cool. But let's say I wanna take these two arrays and combine them together into one. So the way we can do that is super simple. Let's call this merge and set that equal to, and what we'll do is create a new array. Uh, we don't even need to run a function, just a new array like that. And then add the spread operator, socials, comma, and do the spread operator again and add the to do's. And that's it. So just create a new array and spread the other two arrays inside of it. And that's it. So now if we take this merge and output it here on the screen, as you can see, we have everything in one. But what if we have duplicates? So take a look at this. If I just say, wahoo. All right, and I'll copy this over to this one as well. Comma, wahoo. We're gonna get two wahoos, all right? So if you wanna avoid that and just detect the same type of values and just merge those together as well. What you can do here at the beginning, say dot 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 new set like that. And in parentheses, we're gonna add another array saying to do's and socials like that. And hit save and take a look now. It removes all the duplicate wahoos and we're left with only one wahoo. If you're into extraction, let me show you how you can do that. So. Let's imagine we have a user and you want to extract stuff out of him. So he's an object. Okay, cool. Right? So you have this user. Now, if you want to extract something from it, so let's say I want to console log out his age, you'd have to go do the user and then add a dot and then you have access to either the age property or to do's property or tweets. The way you can do is just say, just create a variable here. And then this is your extraction tool here, the double curly brackets. So basically, you set this equal to the object that you want to extract from. So in this case, from the user. And in here, you add the properties you want to extract. So age and then tweets. And that should work fine and dandy. So let's give it a shot. Look at that. We have 20. Amazing. Now, what about, what about arrays and objects? Well, normally you'd have to do user dot to do and then 
the number, the index of the item. So zero in this case would give us the first one. So if we run this, there we go. I had my first kill to Bahu. Okay, but you can also extract that in here, which a lot of people don't know. So all you need to do is add the property name in here and then just an array like that. And you can name these anything you want. So like the killed one and then the rain one. And that's it. So if I do a console log killed now, look at that. You have that nice and shortened. Next up on the list is a cool, simple way to generate a hex code. Uh, which basically generates your random color. So how do we do that? We can do math.floor, which essentially takes a number and it, bring it brings it down to a full integer value. So for example, let me just show you. If you do a math.random and that's it, see, it gives us 0 0.49 and then 0 0.66651. But if I wrap it around a math.floor, and just pass in math.random in here, you're gonna see that just gives us back a full integer like zero. We add math.random and in here, we multiply it by 0xffffff. What the hell is that? Well, uh, 0x is a way for you to tell the computer that you're using hex, all right? That's the way you add zero X and FFFFF here just means white. So if we run this command now, it basically generates us a, a six digit number here. Okay, but we, we want a hex code. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back here and we can say to string. Now what does to string do? Takes this number, makes it a string. However, in the parameters here, we can also pass a number to string. So, what number are we passing? We're gonna pass 16. Why 16? Uh, because the base of hex is 16. So here you can do different bases. So bases are like binary or decimal, right? Binary being either zero or one. Uh, decimal being from zero to nine, right? The character from zero to nine. Hexadecimal is gonna give you zero to nine and also A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, so all of that, right? All the, all the 19 symbols or however many they are. Uh, so if you break it down, hex is six, right? And then decimal 10, so hexadecimal. So six plus 10, 16. So two strings, 16, and look at that. You get a random hex. It still doesn't have the hashtag, so you can just pre-append um, if you do like backticks here. And there you go. You get the hex code as well. Let's do style, the background. There we go. Let it run wild. Our next one liner allows us to copy something to the clipboard. So basically what I want to do is when I click on this button, I want to save a text or something. So what I have set up here is just a button that has a click listener on it, right? And we get an alert message. And that's not gonna do anything. But here's the one liner. Let's call this copy. So it's a function here and we pass down one parameter called text to it and then we access navigator.clipboard and here we have a method called write text and it takes one parameter in which is a string in this case whatever text we want to copy to the clipboard and that's it so now in here we'll just call copy and we'll say okay let's give that a shot so click on the clipboard okay paste it in and there we go Here's a fun one that I actually don't see used that often, but I think it's a really helpful tool and event. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say we have this button and when I click on it, I want to fade it out and remove it from my DOM. So I just have an opacity zero on it. So that's kind of the problem. See, if you just do a transition with opacity zero, uh, the button's still there and it's still clickable. So how can we solve that? You might be like, let's do display none. Then no animation. Well, let's go to opacity zero. And here's a little cool event that you can use. Button add event listener. And it's called transition end. So basically it waits for the transition to finish. And after it does, we can run a little function here like that. And we can say button style display none still kept it the one-liner like that and take a look I click it and boom it's removed 
Display none added. Can't click on anything anymore. Next up is probably one of my most used one-liners in JavaScript and, and especially in React when you're gonna work, you're gonna see this tons used. So let's say you wanna get some user data here, right? So you gotta run a function and then this is the data you wanna get. But what you wanna do is do a check if you have a user or not. So what you can do is, let's just define a user here and let's say he's not available, okay? So we're gonna set him to null. So we're gonna write if statements, but we're gonna write one line if statements. So rather than doing something like if there is a user, then I wanna return the data here like that, else uh, do something else, throw like throw an error, console log, no user. Okay, so this is gonna work. Console log, get user data and let's run this function and let's run this and see and it says no user cool so uh, runs into our else statement all right i just don't like the format of this too much so here is a simple one-liner that you're going to use tons then here at the top what we can do is say if there's no user then we can just return and that's it make it the user now Let's say we have a string of something in there. This can be like our ID. So now that's gonna be true. And there we go. Now we, we retrieve the data. We're all used to just saying console.log, right? We do console log and let's say we have these videos here. So how many times did you do this, honestly? There we go, and then you have to click and open it, and boom, boom, boom. But here's one I bet you didn't know, console.table. So when you have an array with objects inside, it's gonna format it really nicely for you. Take a look at that. It's gonna give you the index, it's gonna be the name, and the views in a nice, beautiful format. So yeah, next time you have an array of objects, try a console.table, it's really good. Last but not least, here is a super cool way to capture your screen and any other application on your computer. So this only works on desktop, but it's really cool and I wanted to show you. And it's a one-liner, so it's really easy. So what you need is, if you wanna see the preview, you can add a video element here. And I just have an event listener on this button just so I can click it, all right? But the actual, actual way to do it is, is literally one line of code. So here it is, let me simplify this. Uh, what you need to do is grab that video and on the source object um, you await this navigator and get media devices and there's this method called get display media on it and here you can pass in different options so I'll remove this top one but for example uh, on the video if you want to see the cursor for example you can define that so cursor always or you can make it invisible as well and what else you can do is audio if you want this to be either true or false i'm gonna put it to false you don't need this so it's literally one line right there so let's take a look start capture boom i can either capture the entire screen or i can choose a specific window in this case i'll choose our VS Code here and take a look. If I go back here, look at that. It's currently capturing whatever I'm seeing in my code. So if I make the small screen, look at that. Well, there we go. Pretty cool, huh? That's gonna be it for us here today. Make sure to drop a subscribe to show your support. And yeah, we have tons of other stuff planned. Maybe the next one we're gonna do is that Blender challenge that I kept mentioning. So that's another video that's coming up very, very soon. But if you have any other suggestions, leave it down in the comments and we'll do it. We feel very creative these days. So just throw anything at us and we'll learn it and teach it to you. Okay, well, I don't know what that weird motion was, but we're gonna end it on that. Bye.